Hi everyone, this is Julianne Victoria of Through the Peacock Size. Welcome to my channel. I haven't done a vlog or discussion video in a while. I think it was early October or so. Um, so here I am with my next vlog discussion video. So over this holiday weekend, this Thanksgiving holiday, I've watched a few YouTube videos within the tarot community um, of people who are saying that 2019 is going to be a depth year. And that really resonated with me. Now, I tend to be pretty deep. I read psychology. I study ancient languages. I like to dig deep. I love research. And what they specifically mean about a depth here is to read all the books they have, because like them, I too tend to buy books at a faster rate than I can read them. Um, so I have a pile of books. There's some books I want to reread. There's some books I've gotten in the past that I've Bought mainly as like a reference book, but I want to read them cover to cover. So I'm jumping in to the depth year of 2019 and going even deeper, digging deeper into books, reading, researching, learning, um, which I'm always doing, but I'm going to go deeper. And that includes tarot decks too. So I've actually really grown my collection this year. Um, and I've worked with most of the decks I've gotten, but I want to get to know them even better. Um, so I'm committing to that as well. So I'm not going to be getting as many new books in the new year, although I have many decks I still have not shown on my deck tour series. Um, and I'd also like to do more in-depth reviews because um, I've only done really short ones. And that's because I've been really limited on time with baby. Um, so I'm figuring out how to have more time so I can do longer videos without trying to rush. Um, so that's coming up as well. But I do want to commit the year ahead to, to having a depth year, to reading more, to researching more, to digging deeper. And for me, all of that, everything I read, working with tarot cards, working with astrology, kind of everything I do goes into my writing and my creative projects as well. So those are going to expand and grow and get deeper. And I have quite a few books that are in the works, either on my computer, on paper. Some are just in my head, but I've been working on them in my mind for several years. I tend to store things in different places. But I want to dive into those and really work on them consistently, focusedly. Is that a word, focusedly? Um, and committing time to reading the books I have, to rereading some of the books, to reading the books cover to cover that I've only used as reference. All that information, even working deeper with some of the tarot cards, because that's going to get deeper within myself, all that is going to be used and useful in the books I'm working on and in the decks I'm working on. So there's a lot of projects there. Um, and it may sound like a lot, but to me, everything's connected. It's like everything I do is sort of woven together. So one thing will inspire another thing and that will inspire another thing. And something I realize or work on or write in this, I can take that bit of information and work on it for that. So that's something I'm doing personally, committing to a depth year or an even deeper year in the year ahead. And it's interesting that this is actually supported by my astrology because Jupiter is now in my 12th house, not for all of 2019, for, but for a big portion of it, or at least the year ahead from the time of recording this video. Um, and 12th house is the house of the psyche and the unconscious and spiritual seeking. And most of what I read and what I do has to do with all of that. So it's very much supported by the Ju Jupiter energy here. Um, and so I'm actually feeling really excited to really dive deeper. And even though it sounds like it's going to take a lot more time and work and energy, I'm not feeling stressed by it. I think I think I have that Jupiter expansive growth energy supporting this, that it will, it will just happen. And honestly, I've gotten really good at focusing the limited amounts of time I have to do things. Um, I've gotten really good with that 
now that I have my baby. It really helps me to <laughs> focus my time. Not that I was wasted time before her or this or that, but I'm really disciplined and focused, which is also supported by Saturn being in my first house, helping me be more disciplined. And that's for quite a while. So I'm not stressed about this commitment, even though it sounds like I'm gonna like have this enormous to-do list and things I wanna do each day and read this and study that deck and write this and do that. Um, somehow I feel very calm about it, even though I'm already as busy as can be. So that's just a little personal thing I'm committing to. You may be interested in that, you may not at all, um, but I'm committing to this depth here ahead. Now, when I was thinking about this earlier today, this got me thinking about a year ago. Not that a year ago was one specific thing, but I have this practice, you could call it, um, where once in a while it's like a check-in and I sit down and I think about, or maybe I'll write it out, where I was one year ago today. And this can be at any day of the year, any time of the year, um, but it's like a check-in point. And I think, where was I one year ago today? Because a lot of us, if not all of us, you know, we go through and we think, oh, nothing's changed. Oh, I wanted to do this much. Oh, nothing's happened in my life. But if you do those checkpoints and you think, where was I one year ago today? In many cases, maybe not always, but in many cases, you'd be like, you know what? Last November, I was... I hadn't done this, I hadn't done that. So like for me, a year ago, last November, last Thanksgiving, 2017, I was still in a lot of excruciating pain recovering from uh, labor and emergency C-section. I had new injuries on top of that because of how I had to compensate. I was just trying to get through each day, managing the pain without falling down or dropping my baby. I had just opened up to do client readings. It was very limited and I think I think it was November last year where I came back on YouTube and I just did the weekly tarot spiritual guidance readings. Um, and I added that in because I needed something to balance out the all-encompassing, overwhelming pain and the same time of needing to take care of my baby. Now, of course, my husband's here to help, but he'd be at work all day. And, you know, he, would, he did the midnight feeding, which was wonderful, but I was in so much pain, I couldn't even sleep. So I was up anyway. I was in a really challenging state, but slowly, working to come back. And so that's why I did decide to come back on YouTube and do the weeklies at least and open up for a client reading here and there. I did it very slowly because I needed that creative energy. I needed something to do and create for myself outside of recovery and taking care of my baby because I needed to bring that creative energy to help me heal. And now, I just have a little bit of back pain, a little bit of this and that. So when I think back on that, I realize how far I have really come. So it's that checkpoint. Um, and there's, you know, everything else. Like, I hadn't been creating anything for a long time except my baby. Um, I had a really difficult pregnancy, so I was recovering from that as well. And so when I check back into that one year point, so now, November, compared to last November, my life, like, so much has happened. I've created so much. I've created two decks. So I have my fine lines meditation cards, and I just did my Oracle of the Fool, and I'll make a video on that soon. Um, I have a third deck that I'm working with on a publisher, and... I've come further on a couple of my books. They're coming along, <laughs> but the deck sort of took over. I just kind of go with the flow of what's coming. I completed my online tarot course, learning the, excuse me, exploring the symbolic language of the tarot, and that 
is out there. I'm working on a course for the Fine Lines Meditation Cards. Like, so much is happening. And a year ago today, I could not have even imagined that I would accomplish this much. So it's like a check-in point. Now, it can be challenging if you do this check-in point and things have gotten more difficult over that year. But you could see that and be like, okay, a year ago I was doing this, I was doing that. There's been some challenges throughout the year, but I know I can get there again and do better. So if you're looking back, if you do this little practice, this check-in, you look back on a year ago and you're like, oh, life was so much better. See that as a goal point to get to next and sort of flip it. So if you're here and this was a year ago and it was better, flip it. So it's like this. So the coming year, you hopefully get back to that point or better. But most cases, most of the time, you know, we're thinking, oh, nothing's happened. I'm still here and da, da, da. And you think about the things that are like not improved how you want. But if you do the check-in, you start to realize you've accomplished quite a lot. And it may not be externally. It could be internally. Because I know internally, so much has grown and changed and healed within me as well. So that's just a little something I do. You may be interested in trying it. Um, yeah. So thinking back on a year ago, then that got me thinking about manifestation. Because I, you could say I've created and manifested so much in this past year. Not that I didn't at all before that, <laughs> but just as the one year mark. Um, and that reminded me that someone, I think it was Lucy, because you always ask the best questions. Um, maybe it was Rochelle. I forget. I don't have the piece of paper that I wrote it down on and I forgot to check the, the old video. But either, I th no, I think it was Rochelle. Rochelle had asked a question um, a year ago when I, or was it last summer when I came back to blogging, I started adding in the blogging videos or discussion videos. Um, she asked about manifestation because she said, you know, my life, you know, my home, my husband, my baby seems so different from what my life was because she had been following me for a long time. I think even before I was on YouTube, maybe I'm not sure. Um, but for quite a few years. And what I would say is what I have now is something I've envisioned, I've, I want to say known, that I've put out there, that I've seen, it's kind of a little of both, that would manifest in my life at some point. So intuitively, I always felt, and I have seen in my mind's eye that I would one day have a little girl. Now that's something I've felt for many, many years. Like I could even like picture what she would look like. So going back at least 10 years, if not longer. And I kind of always felt I would have one child. And I used to always say, one, maybe two, if the first one went well, or depending on how the first one went. And that's because I had always felt that I would have a difficult pregnancy. And both of my grandmothers had multiple C-sections. And knowing that growing up, I, you know, anytime it was talked about, I used to always think, I think I'll have to have one too. So part of me kind of knew how all the pregnancy and delivery and everything would be. Part of me always knew I'd very likely have a little girl someday. However, and you know, looking at astrology, you kind of know when there's more supportive energy, it's not guarantees, but more supportive energy for things to happen in your life. So I kind of always knew it or suspected <laughs> it would happen later in life. Though that's not what I wanted. That's not what the ego identity wanted. You know, if I had a preference, a choice, I would have preferred of all this to have manifested like 15 years ago when I was in my late 20s. That would have been a more ideal time, not when I was in my early 40s. 
yet somehow part of me always knew. So when it comes to, you know, the question about manifestation, something, sometimes what you wish to manifest, manifest, or the intentions you put out there to manifest, or the prayers you put out there in the hopes of manifesting, along with some things you kind of intuitively know and strongly feel will happen in your life. They don't always happen quite when you ideally, your ego mind, wants them to happen. Um, trying to think if I can explain this better. So to answer Rochelle's question, you know, like, yes, this is something I wish to manifest. It's something I also felt intuitively was probably going to manifest. And in the meantime, until the timing was right. And when I use the phrase, when the timing is right, it's not just the timing for you, but there's all the other people for whom the timing has to come together. It's not a linear thing. So in the meantime, until it happened, I lived my life and did what I could create and manifest and what I felt I needed to do in that time. And those were other things that I was manifesting or were manifesting in my life. And so there was also a part of me, like in my late 30s, where... How do I want to say this? I had to let go, so not cling to, or not mentally attached to, um, with the ego, the possibility of having a child. Even though a part of me knew it, I could see the girl. I always knew I would have a girl. <laughs> um, I would have been shocked if it was a boy. Um, I had to have my ego let that go because by clinging to it trying to grasp for it I was pushing it away and so in that process so that working to let that go I think when I was like 38 38 37 38 I really vividly remember telling myself I need to grieve this away and there was like three days where I cried non-stop not that it was poof gone after that but that just it was a purging of this feeling of I'm supposed to have a child right and I don't believe in trying to force something like that to happen if you feel a strong like this is what I'm supposed to do if you try to force it to happen it's not gonna turn out well, it usually doesn't. So I had to release, let go, wasn't meeting anyone, just like no relationship potentials anywhere. So I was just like, you know what, I'm at an age where I really need to let this go, not cling to it, not, not have it like looming over me. And by doing that, I also, that was just part of this process of deciding to tear the tower of my life down. So I went through a, like a tower card phase, but I did all the deconstruction. I chose to sell my home for nothing because of the market, close up my thriving healing practice, move back to San Francisco, Part of it was I really needed sunshine. I was a vitamin D deficient. I needed that for my health. And more subconscious than conscious at that time to dive into ancestral healing and healing deep within my psyche, especially mother issues. And then I realized some father issues, some family issues and all that. Um, by letting that go, I freed myself to step into the middle of the destruct the tower that was coming down to deconstruct, I guess you could say kind of deconstruct my ego 
so I could peel away and get into my psyche to do this deep inner healing work. And it was kind of a nightmare. <laughs> it was a nightmare for a few, two or three years. But the more I was in, in it, the more I saw what I was doing there. Even though the ego identity, Julie was like, I don't want to be in this. I understood that there was a deep process going on. And so I worked through it. I did my mantras. I, I dove into it deeper. I dove into it deeper. Um, can't remember who had said it. I want to say Alan Watts, but I'm not sure. But the, the quote, the only way out is through. I had to go through it. And I knew I had this trust in my inner knowing that if I worked through that, if I healed, I think this was an important key, if I healed, maybe not all, but a certain amount of ancestral healing, whatever I carried through that I was carrying on, if I healed that so that it would not go into a child I was to have, I would likely get to all that that I have seen for myself and it would manifest. And that's actually what happened. Yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> it took years. It was a lot of work. I, once I moved to the Santa Barbara, California area, I immediately met the person who I would, who would be my husband. Um, we married a year later. Um, and then a year later we had our baby girl. Um, it all fell into place. And it was like once I, once I was ready, once I had healed enough, once I had done enough healing with family, with ancestors, and I do feel like I had to be in the family home to do a lot of that because you'll have to watch my last vlog, which was I, was, I grew up in a haunted house. Um, you might get some hints why. But there was a lot of stuff there. There's still some, but there was stuff there I needed to release, leave there, free the house from, free, free ancestors from. Um, I had to actually be there to do it. And so while I was there, I understood why I had to be the tower, the center of the tower, and doing the deconstruction of the tower itself. I had to, it's like I had to take on the energy of Shiva, the destroyer, so that the new could begin. So it was a grand ending <laughs> in a way that was very difficult, but very healing. And I had to go through the rubble and be in the rubble in a way to clean it up for the new beginning to start. Hope that's making sense there. Um, so yeah, Rochelle, I'm pretty sure it was you. Um, manifest, manifesting all this, yes. I'd been work, I'd one, I'd been working to manifest this by setting my intentions, by trusting my guidance, trusting through really difficult times, trusting that I would get to this point where I am now. And I had full faith in it and it wasn't always easy but it was through letting go of trying to grasp for it. And it took years. Sometimes manifesting things takes 15 years, 20 years. Sometimes it takes a week, depending on what it is and does it involve other people? What, you know, it takes time. Occasionally, some things really aren't meant to be for us. It's just wishful thinking and our egos wanting to have that. Um, Again, it's not linear, it's not that like cut and dry. But I also, I, I'd always known that I would get to this point. It just took a lot longer than my ego mind wanted it to. <laughs> and often that's the case. And there's reasons for timing, multiple reasons, maybe infinite reasons. 
we don't know all the energetic and spiritual reasons and maybe a part of us is in a parallel reality and needs more energy who knows there's there's it's not just a this then this then this it's this and that comes in and this energy there and that person and this energy and so manifestation I feel like things will happen when the timing is best unless we try to force it to happen then the timing can be off and that doesn't mean everything's perfect and wonderful and exactly how you want it there's still lessons there's still challenges there's still um, experiences to trigger our growth and those usually aren't the the really happy pleasant ones <laughs> it's the challenging ones but yeah be patient if there's something you're hoping and knowing will manifest in your life. It just may take longer than you think. And that's something where like, I'll look at astrology, which can be comforting. Sometimes it could just be like, ah, oh, it's gonna take longer. Um, Cause I'll, astrology is the study of time. And you can see when the energies are more supportive of things. And I say it that way because it's not set in stone. Things are likely to happen when there's good angles, good aspects, good energy. Things are unlikely to happen when there's restrictive energy and things are slowing down or unexpected energy. So astrology can be looked at to, yeah, to see like, yeah, is it likely to happen this year? And, you know, something people often ask me, you know, when am I going to meet someone? And... You know, you can look at something like a Jupiter transit and be like, you know what, it, there's a good chance it could happen this year. It's not a guarantee. It could happen in a few years down the road. It could happen earlier. But often where the energy is more supported, things are likely to happen. So that can help with dealing with the timing of things that you're hoping and feeling and knowing will manifest. I hope that makes sense. So I read a few notes here. Um... I think I covered everything. Yeah, and letting letting go, not forgetting about things and not putting it in a prayer or whatever it is you do, um, but letting go of like, oh, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta do this. Cause you know, I could have chosen a totally different life and said, oh, I know I'm supposed to have a child. I know I'm supposed to have a little girl and gotten in the worst relationship and be stuck, you know, have that, like, it would be chaotic. Maybe I'd have the little girl, but I'd be in this, like, abusive relationship, or it would have ended, and, you know, I could have tried to force it to happen, but things usually don't turn out quite as smooth. Not that it's always smooth, but as well as they could for what lessons you need to learn as well as they could with the karma in play. Does that make sense? So yeah, it's just my little ramble on a depth year ahead. Um, thinking back on a year ago and manifestation, it's all interconnected to me. I hope it all intertwined with you, uh, but it all has to, has to do with going even deeper um, because it is a big part of what I'm writing and what I'm working on, the books I'm working on. Um, and the energy of manifest, manifesting the writing and creative things I'm working on now. Okay. Thank you if you stayed watching this long into my little vlog discussion ramble here. Um, thank you everyone for stopping by liking, sharing, and subscribing. And if you do have questions or topics you'd like me to discuss, questions about me or what I do or spiritual topics, leave them in the, uh, the comments below. Um, otherwise, yeah, thank you for watching this long and I'll see you back here soon.